Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Do What You Like Fitness conversation series. So we are talking with awesome humans who are inspiring the world right now. Today we have my girl L.A. from Black Girls Eat, and she's inspiring many more people to join the plant-based revolution. It's a revolution, I tell you. All right. <laughs> get healthy. Get fit. She's our first guest that's going to actually do a cooking demo for us on screen. She's going to cook her recipe that's on her website, and it's called Honey Garlic Tofu, right? Spicy oh, Honey Garlic spicy. Tofu, all right? So let's welcome LA. I'm glad to have you here. We're glad to have you. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I want to thank I you guys for inviting me to do this. I'm so excited. Yeah, this Spicy Honey Garlic Tofu is actually one of the first meals I made for myself when I was trying to figure out like, all right, I don't, I want to move away from animal products, but like, what am I going to eat for protein? And, you know, I was, I, you know, and I found out later that we're all getting way more protein than we probably really need. Like I just had this incredible, you know, number in my head. And someone said to me, so when Popeye got strong, what did he eat? And I was like, Burr, he was eating spinach, you know, it wasn't even, you know, and that just like was a mind blower for me. And so <laughs> that's what they taught us. Yeah, tofu was one of those products that I would see in the supermarket, but just keep walking right past it because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know right. what to do with it. And the fact that they had like labels like, you know, firm and extra firm, and it didn't matter to me. <laughs> you was lost. <laughs> And I consider myself like a real savvy New Yorker, you know, all five-star restaurants, you know. I went to Japan and had miso soup with, you know, the cubes of tofu in it, but yes. I didn't know what to, what to that's do. Where, that's where it began for me, too, at Benihana's with little cubes of tofu inside. Exactly. You're like, what? And so to actually, one, I didn't even realize how inexpensive tofu was. That was the first shocker, $1.79, $1.99, mm -hmm. you know, maybe two and change in the supermarket. So that was the first shocker. And then I decided to just go for it because I think because it wasn't that expensive. That's what made me say, well, just grab one and go home and give it a try. Right. And so, you know, and that's really what the, this plant-based revolution is about. Just for me and the, and the folks in my community, it's like, let's just give something a try because what we've been doing is not working, right? These high levels of diabetes and obesity and coronary heart disease and my own family. Mm -hmm. And I started not feeling well and, you know, and found out, you know, I have inflammation in my body and I didn't know what that was, but I read and, and took classes and found out that inflammation is like a Petri dish for all kinds of other crazy diseases. It's like, come on in, you know? And so I was like, oh, Right, no. right, right. Whitney tells me that all the time. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, the vampire knocks on the door he's like, and he can't come in unless you say, come on in, right? And then you're in trouble. So I, I felt like, you know, let me figure this thing out. And then along the way, me being who I am, you know, I, I, I love to learn, but I also love to share what I'm learning. And so it was like, I was joking with my husband and probably my girlfriend's like, I can't be the only black girl navigating this world of plant-based nutrition. I'm gonna make a company called Black Girls Eat. And that <laughs> I love it. That's literally how we started. Nice. That's I mean, that's, 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 that's kind of a tagline to draw, to draw us in, you know, because people often, you know, think they grew up with the, the the southern food and this and that and you know they I I, I find it like I used to think like there wasn't that many black people forget girls or, or or boys or men or women just period it was just about the southern food and that was the thought in mind but like now I see it's it's a lot of it's a lot of people starting to transition into like more yeah. plant based and things like that that's like in the color community so you know it's yeah. pretty good because I think you agree with me the same thing as far as like us being plagued with this hereditary thing. Like, I, I think it's bull crap. I don't think it's hereditary. It's, it's like, it's, it's learned behavior. Like you, you know, we grew up eating that, you feed your kids that and it's learned behavior. And I mean, it's, and it's, and it's, and then it ain't marketed that way. Like, like it's, it's, it's a black thing as a black community. And I don't think it's necessarily true because I'm pretty sure Whitney, you're from the South. There's people that's white down South that have obesity and all this oh, other stuff. I see. Oh yeah. Like they eat 
pig hog necks and this and that, whatever. Any, so, anything and everything under the sun. Soda, I mean, you name it, the cookies, the, the fried chicken, the the fast food, the processed right. food. So they put it in yeah. our mind that, oh, we're we're bound to get sick. This is it. And then so many people that I've that I see except that they're just like oh I'm almost 50 I'm about to get the diabetes like oh. because I'm black like come on <laughs> so but is, you know I'm glad you said the word marketing because that's something that was confusing to me I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about food and things the marketing is really interesting like you think <laughs> you're doing a good job by starting your day out with some yogurt you know and then like it has 20 three grams of sugar in it like what you know mm -hmm. I didn't exactly. really you know when even when you think you're doing a good thing for yourself sometimes you're like wait a minute let me read these labels because mm -hmm. things that's hot that are high in sugar high in salt you know um some people will say to me you know I actually say to myself forget about some people like I'm doing pretty good all I had was you know a yogurt for breakfast and a piece of fruit or all I had was you know um a bagel with you know a little cream cheese like I thought I was doing the darn thing and then <laughs> when I started <laughs> eating labels because I figured out you know for a whole year my body was I was in pain every day like every single morning I woke up in pain and then really I was in a dangerous and I said this everywhere I go I was on a roller coaster ride from hell at mm -hmm. nighttime I was popping you know Advils and Tylenol P PMs and things like that so I could just sleep and then, like, in the morning, I got a full life. I got a full-time job, mom, wife. So I'm drinking cups of coffee and Pepsi. I mean, who the heck? You know, I was like, it was a terrible, terrible thing. And so I was really glad I finally met Dr. Gaudet, who was a rheumatologist in New York City, who just took me seriously as, you know, and that's something about women and women's health, right? I've been learning about, like, you have to be a real advocate for yourself. If you don't right. feel well, the physician is not on your page, you got to figure out how to get somebody else to listen to you. Cause I had gone to other physicians who kind of, you know, they kind of shrugged it off. Like, well, you know, it could, you know, I don't see anything, so to speak. And the rheumatologist ran a battery of tests of blood work. Mm -hmm. And that said, you know, everything is looking good. You don't have diabetes. You don't have cholesterol. You don't have cancer. You don't have lupus, but what's mm -hmm. going on with this inflammation marker? And that was the, the beginning of me looking into like, well, what does that mean? You know, what is inflammation? So I'm so grateful because it just sent me down the path, you know. So your rheumatologist caught the inflammation in your yeah. blood work? And I think other people had, as I thought about it, I remember someone saying that to me maybe four years prior, but it was like very offhanded. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh. Candy, yes, right. I Honestly, that's, that's how I have it with Whitney. She said that to me. Cause I was, I remember I told you when I interviewed with you, I, I, I was doing keto and she's like, you probably got a bunch of inflammation from all that meat. Uh, that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> and oh, I thought yeah. about it. Oh, I, I, that's, that's, that's my introduction yeah, all day for the rest of my yeah. life. Yeah. It was yeah. those words. Right. And you're like, well, what does that mean? I remember the person said it real offhanded, like, oh yeah, you know. And I, and then I even remember saying, well, what do you think it comes from? And they were like, it could be a variety of things. It was only Dr. Gaudet that was like, well, <laughs> it could be this, 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 and this, you know, and then from her, That's I met great. a natural path, you know, um, and did some more blood work to see like food specific, right? Mm. So I realized I don't really have that much reaction to like cheddar or mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Who knew, right? Like drilling all the way down, but goat oh, cheese, wow. you know, um, what was the other one? Monster cheese. Like it was a whole list of, of things. And it was like, whoa, I should have brought that with me on camera. So that was helpful too. Plus I'm a big, uh, I'm a nerd for data. Like I need to know, like I need to know or everything what's happening. But I was also very excited to see, like, I don't have allergies, but just being aware. And I always tell people like, I'm better than I was two years ago. And I'm proud of that. And I'm going to be better next year. 12 yes. months. Yeah. Next year, right. Yeah. So, you know, people say, why aren't you all the way vegan, right? It's like all the way vegan. You know, you're you not going to eat nothing that ever had a parent or face. And okay. the lifestyle, right? You can't wear anything, leather, anything, wool, anything. See, that's the thing, Sharae right? and I were talking about that today. So you're not having me, but you still wear leather shoes? Like, I can't commit to that because I, 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 I don't right. have the resources to do that. You know, to, so I have to figure out and I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, I have learned, you know, so much about the planet and about 
how we actually get food. You know, I started started talking to farmers. You know, I went to Toronto and talked to farmers versus talk to farmers in New York City. Like, I really understand, like, it's a real thing, you know? And mm -hmm. so to the, to the degree that I can keep animal products off my plate, like, that's what I'm advocating for myself. Now, other people who are fighting inflammation and they don't have a problem, but for people who want to know, like, why does my body hurt? I'm always saying, start looking into that meat and that dairy because that is, that is, yep. right? Yep. And then what can I do to feel better and get more energy? And I'm like, you know, try more grains, try more vegetables on your plate, you know, pick mm -hmm. one day out of the week, pick one meal out of the day in which you don't have any animal products, you know, and like, it's not cheap, right? Many of these vegan products, right? Especially like vegan cheeses and these, you know, beyond burgers and these plant-based things, they're not, they're not accessible to everybody, right? And so that's another conversation, right? Because mm -hmm. I think I'm understanding now that food is definitely an equity and access issue, right? And so it's real cool to say, I'm going to get the almost meat sausages and there's four of them in a package for $9, right? <laughs> right. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like if you're trying to transition off of it, you eat some of those things, but then there's plenty of plant-based stuff that that's really cheap that you you don't right. have to have. Like, you know, if you get really into like Whitney, like she she doesn't need to have the full stuff. Right. You know, we it's do. Like we just coming off of it, but yeah. all the, all the, I noticed my family, you know, the, the the markets around around the hood, they they yeah. give out potatoes and carrots and beans. They're giving all this stuff out free. And that's actually that's actually the plant-based stuff without getting the fake meats and stuff. It's that's true. Like it kind of, like, I know 4th of July, like I was like, I'm having one of these somebody's sausages with some salad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> y'all are going to leave. We out of 4th of July. But, you know, but on a regular, yeah, I love learning. You know, even here, I just picked up this um this grain, it's a West African grain. I it's called fonio apparently, and it's like a in between rice and the states like couscous takes five minutes to make, but mm -hmm. apparently it's high in protein. And I can't wait. I found a recipe for fonio with coconut milk and turmeric. I'm gonna give that a try. I'm always, you know, trying new things. Um, and so yeah, and that's how we got to this. So while we're talking, let me just say this about tofu because we talked a little bit <laughs> about like to ignore it. But I just wanted to say, it takes forever to, for tofu to dry out but for me. When you take it out the package, it's like soaking wet. I must nice. use like 50 paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dry. But the drier the tofu, the more crispier it will be. And so this this is easy. I'm so proud of you. I woke up today. I have not been online. And I saw that you made your own. I was to say, did you see I tagged you? Yeah, I made it last night, yeah. finally. She did a great job. I let Whitney good. taste it. I tasted it at lunch today. That's amazing. You know, that makes me so excited because people say, are you a chef? I'm like, no, I'm just your homegirl. I'm like, listen, I, found <laughs> I would do the same thing and tell my homegirls, you know, like, why don't you give this a try? And so this is funny. I always print the recipe out, even though I kind of made it up. Because now that I make this at home, I, be, I throw stuff in. I'm like, oh, yeah, how much garlic, how much whatever? But yes. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just slice this while we're talking because okay. um, well, when when I made it last night, you know what? When I first tasted it, so like I didn't go exactly to the recipe because really? I was missing something. So like I told you about two weeks ago that I was gonna make it, right? And I had bought yeah. all the ingredients, yeah. I bought the cilantro and everything, yeah. but I've been so busy lately, I didn't get a chance to even make that, it, which is crazy because yeah. it's quick and simple, it's easy, but I just didn't get a chance to make it. Yeah. So it's my cilantro went bad, so now I'll go in there yesterday, and I didn't have it, and then I ran out of red hot peppers flakes oh, because yeah. I eat them like it's medicine, and oh, okay. I didn't have any more. But I had hot honey, yes. So I love. used hot honey instead, oh, and then instead of the cilantro, I used a couple of scallion. Little, I had like one strip of scallion left. Yeah. I used that, and it came out tasting like um Ooh. to me. My first yeah. bite when I tasted it, it tasted yeah. like French toast. Oh, <laughs> wow. right. So I said, Oh man, the next time I make this, I'm gonna like just cut them in squares and make yeah. it like a French toast piece of bread. It was good. Did, did you have Mike's hot honey? Was it? Yes, Mike's? that's what I used. Yeah, I met, I met Mike a few years ago in Brooklyn, actually. And he oh. handed me 
the Mike's Hot Honey. And I was like, oh, this is so bomb. But I was like, and when I run out of that, I just take my own honey and add the red pepper flakes. But I do love Mike's Hot Honey. Shout out to Mike. Hey, Mike, this is my first time using your honey. My sister-in-law bought it for me for like Christmas and I haven't used it. It was really good. Uh, he was a really, really cool guy. Another sponsor. That's a, that's the other thing. I love meeting people who are entrepreneurs and from New York City. And I happened to be at a blogger conference in Brooklyn. And he was right outside and they were giving out samples and stuff. He was a very, very cool dude. And I do love that. Hi, honey. All I'm saying to people that might be watching this is that I'm just tossing the tofu in some cornstarch because even though it already dried, cornstarch helps take out the rest of the moisture because the goal is to try to get something crispy. So that's all I'm doing. And while that dries over there, I'm going to make the sauce for this. I'm so happy. So I'm so happy when I saw your post. I was like, what? Oh, I think I did it wrong so far. I'm watching you do this. <laughs> I'm making so I mixed the honey and the garlic and everything together with the cornstarch and mixed it up and I pan fried the tofu and yep. then I poured that into the pan. So that kind of came out slightly different, but. No, that's, no because I'm still going to make the mixture with the, with the, with the cornstarch. Okay. Cornstarch makes things stick, right? So even if you ever have like, uh, uh, so you don't have pizza sauce, but you have pasta sauce, you could just add some cornstarch. It will make it thick. A little it thicker. It yeah, cornstarch is like a little secret that somebody taught me, and it makes stuff um, thicker. So you're like, what? This is my favorite cilantro. I get this out of Target because it comes oh, like, in a little I container. Walk over here and be like, is that the dry one or is that the dry one? Yes, I buy this one. I also buy, look, I'm going to be in the fridge. My fridge, I got to clean this fridge out. Oh, my God. He's but got a I computer buy... on her refrigerator. Wait, tell me about your fridge. It has a computer. Let me tell you, this oh. saved my life too because... I used to have, when I was cooking, I would have like my iPad, my phone, and everything would have food on it because I'm pressing the recipe and trying to do it. And so, yeah, this is my husband. You know, he was like, he came through and saved the day to get me this. And also, one of the cool things I love about this is that when I'm in here looking for my own recipe, you know, you could just look at it yourself and then you could see. And how cool is that, right? You could just look at your own YouTube on your own refrigerator cool. you're gonna have to give me the link i need to put the link at the bottom yeah, of this video gonna say, everybody's gonna get that refrigerator now <laughs> if they right. can afford it if we, I have, if we I can afford it. it listen listen i have this in parsley and i have basil i love it I, and this is cilantro parsley basil so i love this it comes in um ginger as well but i love this and so i like to use that i love cilantro and so yeah so the cornstarch goes in there and then, you know, I say in the recipe, like a quarter cup of cilantro, but really, this is how I do it in my house, like this. That looks like a quarter cup to me. So there you go. I eyeball it. That. That's but what Rachel Ray, Ray always say, eyeball it. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, you know, I feel like, I said this to someone before, like, I don't have a cooking mom. I don't have any, like, really rules around cooking because, you know, but I, I feel like if it's not salty and you didn't burn it, then you good. Like, <laughs> that, that's pretty much. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much my bar huh. And then, you know, I'll add the honey. Um, and it says three tablespoons. So I pretty much, you know, I eyeball that too. I think, so I'm glad you made this and I'm glad you enjoyed it because you are proof that it's easy to make. That's how I felt. It was one of the first things I made. It was easy. You know, a lot of times when people are transitioning to plant-based nutrition, they made it feel to me like I had to become like a brand new superhero, like superfoods, whole Foods, organic foods and I was like what ah. yeah. <laughs> you know and and I wanted to be like that's what I wanted to like this conversation is not new right the conversation around food and healthy living and plant-based nutrition but I wanted to throw my little voice in there to be like advocating for people like me who you know don't know where to begin mm -hmm. and who don't need it to be complicated and who needed to just make some sense you know when I first made this Everybody in my family started eating it. They would eat it. They were like, what? That was good. You know, I have to say my daughter and my husband, they're like my two favorite taste testers. You know, they taste everything. And you do have, I don't know, I did have a lot of insecurities too because, I mean, I never grew up like I'm a great cook. You know, I grew up like she, she's okay. You know, she can make a little <laughs> mac and cheese on you know, Thanksgiving, you know. And so when you want to cook differently, it, I think it does make you feel a little nervous about how your family or your friends might um, receive it, you know? 
I'm right. I remember the first, it had to be like the first 4th of July. I remember people like, I don't know. I got a vibe. Like my family was wondering if they were going to starve, you know, like we're going to, we're going to LA. I was, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> eat before you get there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But you know, I still make animal products. Like, well, we eat salmon. We eat a lot of salmon. We eat a lot of uh, wild flounder. Uh, so I, I would make, you know, I'll make a salmon, but I'll make, you know, Mexican street corn and, you know, uh, grilled uh, shrimp tacos. You know, I have yeah. a lot of fun, you know, making a lot of things that taste really good. So I I'm think like you, I'm mostly plant based. We're mostly plant based. Yeah. Whitney's a hundred percent plant based, but we're mostly plant based, and that's a that's a that's big great. shift. It is. It's you got to do what thing. works for you. You know, Listen. find what works for you. You too, because I am a recovering cheeseburger aholic. I mean, my <laughs> <laughs> I freaking god, yo! <laughs> I mean, I think about you know all the things. Even when I first <laughs> married, we would have. I mean, Monday night was meatloaf Monday, and Tuesday night was Taco Tuesdays, and Wednesday. <laughs> It was, you know, it's like every night there was pork chop, there was ham, there was this, that, and the other. And I'm grateful that I live in a food supportive household. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not making, like my daughter's 10, okay? She's going to have ground turkey for Taco Tuesdays, and that's going to be that, right? I have to respect where she's at. You know, sometimes she'll say to me, mom, everything doesn't have to be plant-based. You know, she's very, <laughs> but she is very, very supportive. So, you know, I have to say, you know, I'm not making three separate meals. I had, before COVID, I would coach women and we would talk about that. Like some women were making one meal for hubby, you know, one meal for themselves, one meal for the kids. And I think that's very, very stressful. Yeah. I think that's very stressful, but fortunately, you know, I'm, I don't have that problem. Um, mm. and, and I don't force anything on anyone, you know, and when I, the biggest challenge I think I've been having when I used to go places, people would panic, like, what can LA have to eat? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? It's like when people know that you eat either mostly mostly plants yeah. or all plants, it's yeah. like, oh no, what are we going to make for her? I'm like, just vegetables. I'm okay. happy with just some broccoli, potatoes, tomatoes, right. cucumbers. I don't no, care. Right. String beans. <laughs> You know what? I'm actually the easiest. <laughs> exactly. We all experience that. It's so crazy. It, but it's, it feels good when you get somebody to help you out. All right. So now we're at stove. You prepped the tofu, all mixed yeah. up in this cornstarch, and you made your mixture. There it is. All right. Take us away. I know, right? And so we're ready to rock. So the pan is hot. You want to make sure the pan is hot. How do you know the pan is hot? I just take one of these cubes and you hear that sound. Oh, that low, <laughs> <laughs> low sound. No. I'll throw in the I'll throw in the sound effect. <laughs> Can <Yeah>. hear me. <laughs> yeah, fun. insert sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> We're using this like a low sizzle. Right. right. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think everybody knows that. You know what a sizzle sounds like, people. Well, yeah, then, uh, if you cook if, if you cook often, you know that sizzle sound. Well, yes. yeah, then I then and then you hear the whole joint. I hear it now. Yeah. Now I hear it. Yeah. Pick one and be like, okay, do I have a low sizzle? And then that's good enough for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, you know, I try to just first of all, did I tell you I love these things? I found these, I don't know where, but I love this. It's like a silicone handle, it's really long. Mm -hmm. That way I you know, so close to the stove that's the other thing you know the foodie game it makes me like want to shop now like i want to just get stuff all the time but ask me yeah. some questions oh um, like with all of this with all of the, the health and fitness like you know fashion ties into it too like you you know you want to buy gadgets if you're cooking and like you know like air fryer is the best thing ever for tofu oh, oh my god and then when it comes to working out the fashion and everything. Air fryer, game changer. Yes. I you know what? I just gave my air fryer away to my sister because I couldn't figure out how to make it work for me. I just With gave it to her. It's perfect. <laughs> Did I give it to my sister, my brother. I gave it to my brother. I know. Let me tell you, I, I tried to make a few things and I was like, first of all, it's taking up too much counter space. Oh, it does do that. And I was like, no, I, I can't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I realized I don't make a lot of fried food, so that's probably part of it, too. 
But mm-hmm. I did hear it's good for tofu. I heard it's good for like uh, chips and things like that, you know. Yeah. But I really, I gave it to my brother, so he loves it. I, I mean, yeah, meat. if you if you're a meat eater, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I was still eating meat, something yeah. that's like fatty, like like bacon and and right. and pork uh, with the fat skin on it and stuff like that, it, sure. it does well. It does really good. Sure. Yeah. Regular chicken, it might dry it out too much. But as far as plant based, I think tofu is the best. Tofu is the best thing, I, and tempeh. Tempeh is really good in there, also. If you do, so, I haven't um, tried that. Tempeh. All right, Yogi, I have not tried the tempeh. I see it in the store all the time. Tell me about tempeh. Well, I mean, just by itself, it's kind of like, oh. So you got to make some type of like your honey. This honey glaze would be amazing on that. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of like tofu. It conforms to whatever you can turn it into whatever you want, depending on your seasoning and, um, yeah. As well. Hmm? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Have you tried jackfruit as well? Yes. Oh, I love jackfruit. I saw that in the store yesterday. I was like, "Mm." I love, I (laughs) I actually bought some tonight when Trey and I were at the store. I love it. I mean, it has a consistency kind of like meat, almost like but it or pork, but it doesn't, obviously it doesn't taste like that. I really, um, I buy the kind that has no seasoning on it. So you can season it the way you want, because of course, if you buy it already seasoned, it usually has so much sodium they add, you know, Oh my gosh. What sodium else? and oil and all this other stuff. You know, I just buy it just plain jackfruit. Yeah. I mean, you don't go plant-based and then have high blood pressure. I mean, right. like, the whole point is to lower the blood pressure. If someone I, has high blood pressure, going plant-based. I, oh, DJ, uh, get fit. You got some questions for me. What, what do you want to know? Oh, what you yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you kind of gave us a synopsis of how you, um, of why you went plant-based. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to know, like, like from the time you started to go plant-based, so you went plant-based when you found out that about the inflammation and you got the testing done from the rheumatologist, which which is awesome. And I might need that rheumatologist number just because I like to I like to keep track of my numbers too. Sort of like you like you said, data. I won't say I'm a numbers nerd. I don't like numbers at all. But those numbers are important to me. I literally have them on my kitchen. They're pasted in my kitchen. If you ever come in my kitchen, you'll look and you'll see where yeah. place to put them. But it's important to me. And I, okay. I keep a track of my blood levels of everything or whatever. Yeah. And like you, you, I didn't have diabetes. I didn't have any of that. But I knew I was overweight and I could be that way. So I started keeping track. And once I went plant-based, it just started dropping, 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 which is great. Yeah. So um, my question to you is, after you became plant-based, how long were you plant-based doing this thing on your own before you decided, I'm going to share with the world and create Black Girls Eat? Probably like one day, because I feel like, <laughs> let me say this about Dr. Maggie today. If She's at the Black Girls Eat website right now. I just did a post about her. Um, with I saw it. I didn't right? read it, but I saw it. Yeah, she's right here in New York City. Um, yeah, I feel like Honestly, I had a vision for Black Girls Eat that was like really inspired by the logo because at first I've always been a writer and a blogger and a creative. I've always been that. So writing was not new to me. I knew how to write. And actually, uh, I was excited about blogging. My brother actually said it because I was writing a book and he was like, you should just turn it into a blog. And so about 2012 or 13, I started blogging and like figuring out what is this blogging thing? Um, but it was 2000, uh-oh, it was 2000, I want to say 16, 17, when I started playing around with Black Girls Eat, and I said, I'm going to get a logo, and the designers were all sending me logos, like plates and forks and spoons and knives, it was really boring, and then one designer asked me, can you send me a picture of you, and at the time, I had the curly extensions in my hair, and he sent back, Ms. Avocado, that's what I named her. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, it's just funny. I have a little squeezy like that. I was gonna bring it today and show you, but like, look, I got you in my hand. I, was, I left it. <laughs> I so this logo has inspired everything from the from the t-shirts to the aprons. I'm writing a children's book, a series of children's books. The first one being Miss Avocado goes to the farmers market, oh. um, specifically children in K to three. 
um, to get young people, particularly yes. young. It's important. This market, you know, my joke was always I would go to the farmer's market and walk around it and just pick up some honey crisp apples. Like I never spent no time really <laughs> in the farmer's market. Um, you know, it inspired the podcast. It inspired, you know, um, the stuffed animals and, and the dolls, all the things we want to do with Miss Avocado. Like it's like a whole brand. And so, yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like God put Black Girls Eat on my heart. Because I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been a creative. I've owned many companies and done many things. But, and I've done a lot for artists, you know, music, f- sports, film, television. My first work ever was in the music industries. Um, I even now still have creative partners. Uh, I did a documentary a couple of summers ago. So I feel mm-hmm. like Black Girls Eat, I think it, I, I'm pouring everything I poured into other artists, like into myself, nice. you know, the branding, the marketing. You know, I want my own stuff in Target. You know, I want my own cutting board and fork and knives. You know, we lost B. Yeah. Smith. You know, B. Smith was a, she was that person. The B. Smith linen, the B. Smith spoons. You know, I'm like, yeah, I would love to do something like that. You know, I was thinking about um, just the notion of Black girls eat. You know, very early on, people were, my daughter in particular was like, but can white people, what's going to happen to my white friends? You know, and I was just like, <laughs> how are Black about? You know, it's just. I was like, it's up for everybody, but this just happens to be my voice and I can't do it in any other voice than my own, you know, and felt like if it worked for Essence and Ebony and Jet, then I'm in good company, you know? Yeah, right, (laughs) right, right. right. It works for Oprah. (laughs) I even see it as a magazine, Black Girls Eve magazine. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Avocado, this year she got some legs because it was always just this. Right. I noticed that. She got some legs. Miss Avocado. Yes. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I'm going to show you guys. This is just I love toasted. it. This is toasted up on all four sides. So I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. The, it's it's hard to tell with the contrast of the, of yeah. the camera. It's blurry, but it's hot. But it's on all yeah, four sides. I see it. So I'm just Yeah, and to- see, you have, to have, you have to have the patience to get it like that and flip it each one. Honestly, when I did it last night, after a while, I just started tossing it around in the pan. <laughs> As you can see, my picture look a little different than your picture, but it's the same. It, it just tastes good. It tastes good, man. I think it was the cilantro, the garlic. First of all, who's mad at cilantro and garlic? Not me. So oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, if you pour cilantro and garlic in something, I'm almost always going to be happy. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like there's a real um, opportunity with Black Girls Eat for me to just own my own company, do my own thing in the food space. You know, before COVID, I was enjoying coaching people. I was enjoying going to the supermarket with people and shopping. Like I had a lot of fun doing that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the time where we can return to those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, but I'm very much excited about working with these brands who, who really, I want them to, to, to better understand my community, better understand our concerns and better understand our needs when it comes to food. You know, yeah. a lot of people, I don't know if you guys know, it's Kimberly Renee, you know, when COVID hit, Kimberly got a bunch of plant-based companies, including Splendid Spoon, to begin to deliver plant-based meals to black and brown families during COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, 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 there's a lot of people doing a lot of really cool things. There's a woman named Yvette Brito who is doing a TV show, kind of like when you flip a house, she's flipping bodegas and it's called Bodega Makeover. And I just yeah. love that. Yes, and I grew up in New York and you know, bodegas is like the first store we ever really know. And- I'm upstairs, yeah. I'm, I'm upstairs. You know what, it's funny real quick. I'm upstairs from one. And when I started to go plant-based, like I used to go in there like almost every day, but as I started to eat better and cleaner, I realized <laughs> a whole week could go by and I walked straight into my building. I don't even stop at this store. Yeah, so her goal is to get bodegas remixed so that healthier food choices for the community. I think that's bomb. And I say this to people all the time. It's like, I'm not doing anything new. There is thousands of people out in this food space. I'm just here to lift up those names and celebrate those people and to encourage the community, you know, to try things differently. You know, I'm will, in a in a unscary, non-intimidating way. I think yeah. that's that's really where I'm at with it. I'm about to plate this fantastic <laughs> spicy. And you, you are doing that. Everybody needs to know about Black Girls Eat. Everybody. That's Black everybody. girls, white girls, Spanish girls, right. orange oh, girls, <laughs> purple girls. I know. It's international women. And men. Oh. That's right. Um, so, 
Oh, yeah. So this is, wait, I'm going to plate this for you properly. Put my red pepper flakes on here. <laughs> I made some some black rice today, which is new. I only grew up with white rice. I didn't know that the rice came in different colors. And then I, <laughs> I, I, I thought I was fancy when I discovered brown rice. I thought it was brown. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this month alone, we have black rice, pink rice. You know, of course, I always know about yellow rice representing for the Boricuas. You know, I'm from the Bronx. I, I have more yellow rice than God knows who. <laughs> Whitney um, and I bought chickpea rice today. Oh, yeah. How we were super excited to try this. Oh, yum. I wish oh, I had yes. that right now to eat. <laughs> that looks so delicious. That looks so good. Everybody, you go to blackgirlseat.com so you can see this recipe and make it yourself. If you're scared about tofu, you're not sure. Just like she said, it's like a dollar, two dollars for a pack. Yeah. Just try it. Try it. You know, I love to make black rice, too, because I just love like visually for things to look different on the plate. Mm -hmm. So that black is just like, what is that? You know, I always, <laughs> and black rice has a lot of nutrients, too, and a lot of vitamins and stuff. But yeah, so now I have black rice, pink rice, yellow rice. I just got some brown basmati rice. Like what? <laughs> Happy wants to be in the video. He's shaking my camera. I figured, oh, let me bring that, it in. I'm surprised Rosie's been so quiet because she usually starts barking as soon as I get on camera. But yeah, so you know, you can add your red pepper flakes, and she love red pepper flakes or cayenne. Yeah. You know, even when you get your honey. If you put it in a little container and add the red pepper flakes and let it sit there for a couple of days, then you have your own hot honey. I mean, no shade to the, you know, Mike's hot honey, but, you know, you can just <laughs> <laughs> make it yourself. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, because, you know, that's the thing. Um, I remember I met this woman named Chris. She runs a company called Just Simply Cuisine, and she runs cooking classes. And, and a bunch of college friends and I went to D.C. and took a cooking class with her. And it, that changed my life, too. One of the things she used to say was things like, eat what's in season. And we're like, why? You know, she's like, because if you're like, if you love blueberries and strawberries, but it's January, right? Their season is June, July. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for those berries to get on a plane, get on a truck. You know, I never thought about that. But I'm sure like my Nana and the, the elderly, you know, I'm sure people in my family, they kind of knew that, right? And so I've been trying to teach myself too. So the fall was a challenge because I never... You know, there's so much squash and, you know, uh, acorn squash, delicata squash, you know, all those different kind of things available to you in the fall. Pumpkins, of course, apples, Brussels sprouts. A lot of these things I didn't grow up with. You know, that's just the plain mm -hmm. truth. You always have fruits and vegetables. And I always had vegetables on my plate, but they were pretty much the same five vegetables. You know, we had broccoli, green beans, peas, corn, you know. And so right, exactly. Yep. I yeah, I realized like plant-based nutrition, it really, um, it really, I said this before, it really expands your food vocabulary if you're willing, you know, if you're willing to to step out and, and check it out. I think the farmer's market, I miss the farmer's markets. And I hear a few of them are open now. Um, I miss just browsing around, looking at, you know, I didn't even know like just, just all the colors, you know, all the different variations there are i think i said this on instagram there's 1097 different vegetables you know like what Amazing. really wow incredible wow yeah. eating the same three or four vegetables so <laughs> i'm excited about the future about my family's future i'm excited about just being a part of this community like with you guys what we're doing this evening is exactly what we all want to do just talk to each other learn from each other trade information, build community, yeah. right? Because the goal is for everybody to eat well, feel well, and live well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because we're dying, we're dying too quick, and we don't have to. Right. So and this going, is with everything. It is. And like with working out, like I started taking my work phone calls and just walking with them. Early in this pandemic, I was just at my desk. You know what I mean? I realized, no, I got to get 5,000 steps, 10,000 steps. Mm -hmm. I have a jump rope, a jump rope in front of the house, you know, um, whatever I can do to stay mobile. I think that's something that for maybe the first few months, everybody was just hunkered down, you know. So I love seeing you guys working out, dancing, yogi, and do what you like. I love all that. I think it's just great. <laughs> I do. And, you know, I thank you for your support. And, of course, you know, I support you guys. Yes, the feeling um, is mutual. Yeah, man, absolutely. Me to cook something. 
Yeah. I mean, hey, hey, one day I'm a, when, when things open up and everything's safe, I have to come yeah. up there for, for like a sports night because I noticed you, you promote that a lot too. You're big sports fans, so you've shown alternatives to the wings and the mozzarella sticks and things like that. You posted that, which is dope. It's true. The Super Bowl dope. party, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I'm a sports girl, even though, you know, the Broncos just give me reasons to cry. But... <laughs> So, um, and I love that. And I think that's what it's about. Like us just showing each other that you could have options and if we could just support each other. Like I know it's hard sometimes when you change your diet. Like I said, people in your family may criticize you or other people, you know, I said that today in my post, like stop highlighting people's worst moments. You know, like, like, I, that. I loved that you said right? that. Oh, I was watching that today and I was like, you know what? That is a word right there. You know, People are out here trying. It's very easy to criticize from the sidelines, right? Even what you're doing, you know? So I feel like, I don't know why my screen just went. Hey, Keith. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. Is my battery dying? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's happening? What's happening with you? Everything's charged. Everything's in. I'm like, what's going on? So, <laughs> yes. I, so besides like, you know, food, I'm, I'm, I want people when they say, well, what do you want from, you know, black girls eat? I want you want people to know, you know, I want you to know that I'm already rooting for you, that my pom-poms are in the air all the time, right? And that I'm always going to be authentic. The things that work, work. And the things that don't work, I'm going to tell you, like, if this cheese was terrible or this salad was whatever, like, there's no gimmick here. And yeah. that I'm just mainly dedicated to like, if my little voice helps you do something differently, to claim victory in your health, like that is a beautiful thing to me. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanna mm. do my yeah. part. Exactly. It's a blessing, right? Cause I get to engage with people, which you could tell I'm so shy. I don't know how, I don't know how. I could, <laughs> you know. Me too, me too. And I'm a <laughs> DJ. I'm telling you, I'm shy, I'm shy. Yeah. Nobody believes it. Yeah, and just as a woman, you know, you get to like own your own company, create your own brand, do your own thing. And I think that's beautiful. So, yeah, I, I, that's really all it's about. I'm so grateful for all the opportunities. You know, I feel relatively new to the food space and I feel so grateful for the blog, her community and she media and Splendid Spoon and Google and all these communities who are like, yeah, I'm, I'm rocking with L.A. I'm feeling black girls eat. That's beautiful. But I'm really concerned about my people right here in the Bronx, my right people right here in the five boroughs, you know, my home girls down south. You know, I, I'm very much concerned about the people who are struggling in these areas around health and um, right. wellness and who may live in communities where they don't have access to things I have access to. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a whole big thing where it was like I, I shop online for girls too. I'm not going to the store, but I grew up in a family where you have to touch your own produce. You know, you have to look at everything. Yeah. And I, I had to just do away with that mindset because I don't want to go to the stores. So the good news is they will credit you for things if anything goes wrong. <laughs> but just that even is like everybody's not comfortable with, uh, everybody doesn't live in a neighborhood where they deliver groceries. Let's start with that. Right. Everybody's not yeah. comfortable with credit card going in the computer still. Right? There are people who don't want their credit card information in a computer, you know, or yeah. in an iPad or a phone. So when I'm talking to people, I'm very conscious of that. Like everybody's not living that, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm talking to people down south who go to Kroger's or they at the Winn Dixie or the Safeway. <laughs> yeah. You know? I was, you know, so I try to figure out like, okay, when people message me from different parts of the country, I do a lot of research, like, okay, where are they? What could help them? Um, we talked about um communities, uh Assist, uh, what is it? CSAs, Community Sustainable Agriculture Groups. Mm -hmm. Like there's one in almost every town where you could like maybe for a small fee, then every month you get a basket of fruits and vegetables, you know? So I definitely, and I love that too. I love talking to somebody from Nebraska and talking to somebody from Tennessee and talking to somebody from Jersey, just figuring out where everybody is and then being that person to help them start their plant-based journey with the resources that's available to them. Right. That part is fun that's like the most fun and seeing people like you make a recipe like oh i did that I saw <laughs> like, i'm gonna do yeah. it next i'm gonna try it next yeah. yeah i'm always remixing stuff i mean black girl z is never going to be a site where there's like eight thousand recipes like I, that is not my goal but it's definitely always gonna be a place where you can like find something new like i just made some red beans and rice the other day 
that I've never made before. I just made the almost chicken pot pie. You know, I'm over here like <laughs> playing around wow. stuff. I'm just like, oh, you know what? Speaking of your recipes, I, I I was going through your website, and there's another one that I want to try to make that I that I that I saw, and I mean, oh my gosh, my husband would love it if it, you know oh, if he it? likes it. The vegan cornbread recipe. Oh, I've got to oh, try oh. that. We make that all the time. I love yeah, corn. I got to try it. that. It's funny. I said I was going to try that like a while back because I seen somewhere in the store they had like the jiffy, and it was it said vegan. Oh, and I was Ooh. like, oh, I use some vegan butter and I use some vegan milk. I could probably make this happen. But I seen it on your site. I didn't look at the details, but I'm going to check it out. I'm, I'm going to make a few things from your site. And maybe you go to our YouTube and you make some things that we make or that Whitney makes. She gets a little bit more creative with her recipes than I do. But I'm just yeah. the average girl. We all just average women trying hey, to, you know, show what we do and encourage other people. You know, it's true. Well, especially I'm glad I met you. Even though we kind of like know each other through, like <laughs> through family, we we didn't even realize we knew each other. But I'm glad I stumbled upon Black Girl Z. Me too, me too. I think it's dope, but I agree with you. It's like the everyday things. I think sometimes people feel like it's the highfalutin, you know, remix your world, and it's like no, it's like everyday things. My family. But it's funny, I remember being younger, not having money for milk and eggs, and I wish I knew how to make cornbread without milk and eggs because. <laughs> <laughs> or bread right. is like y'all laughing with my friend about payless. I'm like, wasn't payless always vegan though? <laughs> like, didn't people always <laughs> laugh about the payless <laughs> leather? Like, what? oh, <laughs> I never beautiful. thought about that. They said real vegan, vegan right? It's not, not real leather. Absolutely, everything in there was vegan. Oh, really? Right. Not. <laughs> no no $1,200 vegan boots now, and they used to be like $20 in payless. Like, it's so exactly. funny. Exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> From college, I swear, I had tears rolling down my eyes. These girls had me cracking up. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. Payless was always vegan. And now we are 21 <laughs> paying, you know, $1,000 yeah. for pe- vegan mushroom leather. Yeah. They got a thing called mushroom leather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you do you know do you know about about the, the 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 one that Whitney has the coat from and we also interviewed someone else and they spoke about it there ambassador for like your splendid spoon noise you know about that it's called noise, noise. they have some dope coats and it's oh, all vegan yeah. you got to get one it's i got a big like faux fur one that's like vegan i mean they got incredible nice coat. Coat. warm <laughs> nice I got faux fur. It was like 50 bucks at Macy's. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, what happened? <laughs> Boy, like, I guess, like, some marketing going on. Like, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. Because I remember I had my faux fur jackets and my, uh, I don't know. Did I have everything? Every sneaker wasn't always leather. There was, like, canvas sneakers. And, right, you right, know, right. I, it's like that is a bit much, but I will check it out. I will check, check it out. out. I'm not right now. I'm all savings right now. I'm in. It's crazy. I'm in the crazy saving space. Um, <laughs> yeah, which was you know that's one thing about working from home. You know, not commuting and stuff. I looked at my American Express bill from last year this time, and it was just everything from DSW, Sephora. I was at dinner three nights a week. I was like, what's happening, right? And so that's what I screen- tell people. I'm able to afford. Plant based. If you feel like plant based is expensive, I feel like I've been able to afford it a little bit more lately because, oh, yeah. like, I'm not out at the at yep. the clubs or the bars or going out to dinner with people going spending dinner, money spending money on high pr- price drinks. Crazy. Well, listen, my joke was most somebody says, you know, oh, eating healthy is expensive, and we're like, yeah, so is heart surgery. So there you go. Amen. Like, you know I mean? it's Amen. Be like Your doctor bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> I take. I did take the. Um, I took three classes in plant based nutrition from the Center for Nutrition Studies. I did too. Yeah. You took. That was a game changer. Yeah. And you took another class now, kind of like a remix that I'm gonna take, because I feel like I took that a couple of years ago. But reading about the China study. Oh yes. All that yeah. stuff was a game changer. Learning about the blue zones, you know, all those mm-hmm. things were a game changer, and so. Um, yeah, I think they have a new course that I want to sign up for to just like refresh my refresh my memory. But that changed, that was a game changer too for me. That was I learned a lot. 
I learned a lot. We and have to I, educate ourselves. Well, that's the what it was. Because we we've been brainwashed already. We've been educated, uneducated, <laughs> the miseducation like Laura well, Hill. Well, well, <laughs> so you got to get educated, educated, right? From the veggies. Veggie educated. Now, now we're getting vegetated. Exactly. <laughs> But then you got a favorite recipe? What's what's going on with you? You got a favorite recipe? Who me? Uh my my dancing yogi over here. Oh, oh me, me, me. I you know what? I love, oh my gosh. Um, I do a lentil loaf. It's oh. like a faux meatloaf that I make out of lentils and mushrooms. <laughs> it's super yum. And I do like this fun kind of spicy little barbecue sauce. That okay. goes on it or a barbecue. You can either do barbecue sauce or like kind of a, a spicy ketchup. I get the ketchup that's um, sweetened with dates instead of regular sugar. Yes. It's just oh. a little bit. Yeah. And it's super young. So that's like okay. one of my favorite things to make. Okay. That, yeah. And I do also um, a chickpea burger. Oh, well, you got, me too. Is there a website or where, where, where do I find the recipe? Well, I what do we have on our site yet? I don't well, have we're, we're I don't posting have the, videos as we go on our do what you like. Yeah, fitness. we so haven't we haven't launched a website yet. We're working on that. You know, we started do what you like fitness about what uh, in February. So we're actually just posting videos of us making the recipe. We're just getting started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been doing it, but not posting it. Yeah, so she and she she's being modest. She likes to bake. I, she has more patience for baking than I do. Yeah. She made, what was it? What you made the other day? The carrot? No. Oh, I made yeah. a vegan carrot. Um, it was like a carrot apple cake. Um, Ooh. out of almond flour. Super. I love it. Very it was very good. No sugar. Hardly no sugar at all. Sweetened with apples. And yeah. Some carrots and walnuts and oh, almond flour. Super oh, easy. Cookies right now. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff too. My daughter has a nut allergy, so I'm like, oh, no almonds. Oh, gotta, but yeah. so right, we got organic flour. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another book that changed my life. Did you guys read Wild Diet? Mm -mm. No, I've never <laughs> Wild Diet after. Yeah, that, that book. That was the first books that was like, what? Like this guy oh, was like yeah. careful with you know processed foods and and things are quote unquote natural. You know, I think somewhere in the book he talked about when they. Paper, there's like a brown runoff from the from the from the trees. Mm -hmm. That brown runoff tastes a little vanilla like, and they sell that to companies for imitation of vanilla. So even when you say like it's natural, he's like, yeah, but. Uh. <laughs> I was, was telling good. somebody that the other day. I said you have to be really careful with the word natural. That really has that. That's a scary word sometimes. It really is. You don't so know what that is. You know. <laughs> I'll die. It was one of the first books too that like kind of cracked my skull open. Like, whoa, you know, I love reading cookbooks. I love reading books like that. Um, I just posted about Fix It with Food. Um, Chef Michael Simon from The Chew. Mm -hmm. He suffers from autoimmune disease and uh, inflammation. And he created this cookbook, which I love cookbooks that are beautiful and all the recipes are on one page. That is that book. Fantastic. I, I like cookbooks with vivid pictures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Ga it. this guy named Gaz Oakley, he's the avant-garde vegan. Um, mm -hmm. He has a new, yeah, I'm sure you probably probably know who he is. Oh my God, his new um, cookbook, Trey and I both, we just got it. It's the um, all plants uh, cookbook. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, his recipes love, are fantastic. I love, I uh, have mostly plants by the Pollen family, Michael Pollen, who Michael Pollen, of course, I think, Maybe he was one of the first people to talk about eating mostly plants, like early, early on. Mm. Uh, ironic, bought the book. It was written by his three sisters and his mom. And I bought the book. And um, I think that's where I first saw like roasted chickpeas and all these different things. They're all various. Like some of them are flexitarians. Some of them are vegetarians. Like, so the whole family, there's like a cross of, you know, uh, of approaches. But what I loved about that book is that my daughter's school has a book fair every year. And I had already bought the book. And then I'm like, you would have thought I saw Michael Jackson. I go into the book fair, there, but the pop family, I'm like losing my mind. And my friends are like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, these are the pollen sisters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to check that one out too. Me too. Oh, yeah. well, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll drop some links. Text us all these books. We'll put the links in the yeah. bottom of the video so people, people can get educated as well. 
Yes. Yes, that was hysterical. They were like, what? Did, what? I was like, they're the Bullet Sisters. Yes. So <laughs> there you go. That's how corny I am. I have a little book. It's all about Black girls <laughs> eat and craft it. And it was like such a cool thing. So there you go. Yeah. So well, I love reading. Well, before, before, before you finish up when we go, there's one more thing I want you to talk about. Uh, so not to cut you short, but I don't want to forget. Um, the Splendid Spoon, like, you know, talking about food. What exactly is that? I know you have some sort of discount code. What, what, what What's that yeah. all about? Yeah, man. So um, Splendid Spoon is a company based in Brooklyn, and it's owned by an incredible team of women, which, you know, like girl power. But uh, it's Women's said, Month is National National Women's Month. That's right. Yeah, yeah the CEO Nicole, she reached out to me and a couple of other staff members, and eventually they were like, "You should come on and be a uh, Splendid Spoon ambassador because there's so much synergy between what you're doing in terms of Black Girls Eat and what we're doing." And they basically have uh, pre-made, uh, shipped straight to your door, plant-based meals. There are bowls of grains. There's noodle bowls. There's smoothies. There's these little wellness shots. Um, and I think that those products are helpful for when you just can't start from scratch. Like a lot of times you just want to eat something. And it's just like, I just didn't want to get derailed. I hate getting derailed for my plan, you know? And if I come home and there's nothing in the fridge, that's usually when the danger zone happens, right? right. And, yep. You know, when people say, what do you feel about companies like Splendid Spoon or HelloFresh or whoever? all those other companies, I feel like you got to do what you can afford to do to help you reach your goals, right? And Splendid Spoon is a great partner for that. And particularly for me, even if I wasn't an ambassador for Splendid Spoon, I just love knowing that the products are plant-based and I love that the company is girl power all day. And I have a few of my favorites that I make sure are always in the fridge. And there are times, you know, you come in from either, you know, we're working from home it doesn't matter. I'll be like crazy all day. My daughter's remote learning. My job is here. And I'll look up. It's like 3.30 and I didn't have anything to eat. And so it's great to open the fridge and grab something from Spinning Spoon. And so that's really what that company is about. And yes, I do have a discount code and we can put that in the chat. Um, and I just enjoy working with them. It's been it's been almost a year and I just feel like we're at the beginning of the relationship. I, they just are wildly supportive of Black Girls Eat. I was very excited to see that showcase they did or a spotlight on Black Girls Eat just recently. Um, they're always looking for opportunities to lift up my business and to support me. And so I'm just grateful to them. And, and you know, I'm not mad at a fridge full of ready-made plant-based meals because <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's what a girl needs. <laughs> well, I'm, you, you've, you've convinced me. I'm going to at least try a couple and see, you know, because... I, I ran it. I ran into that this weekend. Like I really didn't even like film any any recipes because I just was grabbing stuff. But I do have my cabinets and kitchen safe where it's like it might not be a meal, but I could stick to plant based. Like I got tons of beans in the cabinet. Worst case scenario, right. you know, right. stuff like that. So I was able to get through. But um, one very last thing, I watched sure. that video uh of you making the cake. What show was that on? And what was it? Tell the people about that real quick, if you can get that out in two minutes. Yeah. So that's an amazing show called Epicurious. And it is uh, from the the Epicurious magazine, is, which is part of the, the Bon Appetit family of, you know, of magazines. They're like all things food. I actually had never watched the show, but I uh, uh, got called for an audition last summer. Um, and they asked me about like, cooking and what do I like about cooking and I had to show them pictures of my kitchen and all kinds of craziness and then one day they called and said we want you on the show and we want you to bake something you know and I was like what I'm not really I'm not really a baker but then I thought like oh, okay I'm gonna take a chance and bake something vegan you know I was like what about like a pina colada cake or coconut cake something that would look really pretty with you know whatever they like great I made the recipe I made the cake at home first with the rum, I was like, ooh, wee, you're gonna need a DUI, you're gonna get a DUI eating this cake. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, my husband's family from Barbados. My mother-in-law was like, you still don't got enough rum in here. So, you know, <laughs> um, and yeah, and so I went down um, and shot that and it was great. And I didn't know 
how they were going to edit it. I didn't know those other gentlemen. I guess they shot another day. I love the way I love the way they put it together, though. It kept you it kept you engaged. Yeah. Like I said, if they would have put your whole thing in one, I might have skipped them other guys and went straight to yours. But I got to see a little different thing. So I'm going to put the link to that. In He's in the good. in the uh, description to this video as well. Once once it goes live, yeah, I didn't know it was that big of a deal until my daughter told me. She was like, "Mom, they have three point four million subscribers on YouTube." I was like, "What?" I was like, "Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that." But that was a lot of fun, and you know, I was a level one uh, because I have zero like training. Like I don't know what I'm doing really, and so. Um, and that was fun and maybe they'll call me back and I'll make something else, but I was happy to represent it for the plant-based community because I thought about that. I said, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to make something plant-based. And I think they would not, they would be surprised that I'm the one making the plant-based thing. So I was like, I'm going to try that. And you know, man, it looked good. It looked like good old Southern coconut type cake or something. Yeah. Uh, so. And then I had the Another one from my mother-in-law, like two weeks ago, she watched the show and was like, she comes over every Sunday. So she was like, so I watched the show, I'm here today and there's no cake? What's going uh, on? <laughs> so I made her another cake. I feel like that's gonna be the gift and the curse. I feel like I'm gonna make that cake quite a few times. Forever now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm put a picture of the cake and insert it right here just to entice people. Please do. Yeah. Yes, I would thank the team from Epicurious for having me out. And thanks to everybody that watched it and commented. And I only read the comments one time. And, you know, after that, it was like, you know, I think, I don't know, 100, you know, 60,000 people saw it, 80,000 people saw it. Like, I don't want to watch, I don't want to read any more comments because then I would be a nervous wreck. So, <laughs> but well, I go you, you're, you're doing great. Your site is amazing. Everything you're doing is amazing. And we want everybody to know about it. And, We'll definitely stay in touch. We'll get you to come out and work out with us in the summertime. Yeah. And, um, we can work out and eat. <laughs> thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. I, I wish, wish you the best of everything. You too, guys. I'm here for you anytime you need anything.